This is ContactTalkRadio.com. Consciousness in action. And you are taking action into your consciousness by tuning into Contact Talk Radio. And on TuneIn.com, Ying.fm, and Upsnap Mobile. Contact Talk Radio. Welcome to Spiritual Psychic with Sarah Wiseman, where you'll learn how to unlock the secrets of spiritual intuition and your own psychic gifts. Here's Sarah. Welcome everyone to Visionary Psychics. I'm Sarah Weisman and we um, are so blessed to have with us here today one of our Visionary Psychics, Krish Saroy. So Krish, welcome uh, hey, Sarah. to this little program that we're doing. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. It's great to be here. It's great to see you. Yeah, you too. Well, you're all the way across, uh, what do they say, across the pond in the UK and uh, I'm here. Yeah. So I don't even know how we met. I have no idea, but I'm so glad we did. And I wanted to talk to you about, um, you've been doing this work for a very long time. Mm. And I wanted to talk to you about um, kind of how you came. I guess I want to talk to you especially about how you came to know that you had these intuitive gifts. Like how old were you when you started to go, whoa <laughs> what was that <laughs> and just kind of what your experience was like because i didn't really know i had any gifts until i was far into adulthood i had the gifts but i didn't know that i had them but what was your experience yeah i think thank you it's um i was one of those archetypal kind of you know young starters who then kind of like fell off the wagon as it were so i um i remember i lived you know my my mum still lives in the house that i grew up in so they bought it back in 1966 and the house is built on marshland that's been reclaimed and uh so there are lots of spirits in the marshes there's a like an ancient fort close by and you know apparently ladies of the night used to cross from the local villages to go and visit the soldiers and many of them drowned so we used to so i used to see and feel spirits all around me when i was like two or three years old i remember my dad worked on kind of night shift and uh, wanted me to go and switch the water heater on for him before he went off and i meant going upstairs in the dark and i was petrified because i could feel you know things up there as it were and that was really early three four five years old kind of thing and of course it was dismissed it was like just my imagination and all that kind of thing and you know and then of course uh it kind of got squished out of me as it were as, you know and that's just what happens right and then right. i think the um the next time it sort of came back i was at kind of high school probably about 16 17 and i had a friend who was a um, very clear she was psychic and uh we just kind of we were like a pair of magnets as it were <laughs> and um she, uh, she started to kind of saying to me well i see this around you and i see that around you and that kind of thing and gradually i it, it freaked me out at first but gradually i started to kind of catch the shadows out of my eyes and start to see orbs around people and that kind of thing so it sort of came back around about 17 and um yeah so it was early yeah and and um kind of you had the experience that a lot of people have where there wasn't any language for it. It was dismissed. Nobody said, oh, Chris, you're seeing departed spirits. It was just like, don't talk about that uh, or that's not real. Um, it was just, and so then you're left with what you see and know, and then what you're told is that that doesn't exist, which is right. confusing as a child. Yeah. Com completely confusing. And, um, you know, one of the first experiences when I was around 17 was, um, playing around as you do as teenagers you know where i grew up there's a lot of wicker um that kind mm -hmm. of stuff um and i remember i was uh at high school but we were in, in music club and we were staying late and uh, we decided to 
do a seance, you know, like right, a very, right. very buffy, you know, vampire <laughs> slayer kind of thing, as it were. But one of my friends, well, there are four of us, one of my friends, uh, a girl called Joe, she actually started kind of rack, rocking back and forth and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, we didn't know about boundaries or, you know, energetic limitations or that kind of thing. So there was actually a thing where she started hyperventilating and stuff. So it was, I mean, looking back now, I would call it something like a, I don't know, it'd be so dramatic, so possession, but there was definitely something going on. But of course, it was like this kind of, I've got no language around this. We're right. playing around, and sh this is this is heavy, you know, yes. it's dark. And that was yeah. like seventeen, so it was even more like, <gasps> don't talk about this stuff. Yeah. You know, was, um, yeah. So yeah, it was it was interesting. It was interesting. What, what do you think about? Um, so as you know, I live in in Oregon in the U.S. So that's mm. a very um, in terms of like the layers of departed people around, there are um, the indigenous people who lived here, but but even then, it's like very sparse, it would have been very sparsely populated. Whereas you live in a place that I, like with so much history stacked oh, on gotcha. it. Yeah, like how is that, how do you, um, when you're seeing departed, it, it must seem like they're just everywhere is that the case for you or what do you experience <laughs> no it's, 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 a, it's a really good well two things i'd say to that um number one you know even though the departed are part of my experience that doesn't tend to be the the the, the channel i i am i like uh tune to or the frequency right. i tend to tune to so naturally but um the other thing is i've had to really learn to and like work with my my kind of guide team as it were to almost really shut them out because you're right uh i mean i live in a, a 19th century cottage right now but where i grew up the town i grew up in was a saxon village mm -hmm. originally. yes so right went back to like the 8th century so it, it, it growing up like with that kind of experience it was it was like a it was like being on a crowded train at times you know there would be mm -hmm. so many departed around that it was overwhelming so i had to learn to put up very very strong boundaries and even now because there's so much around it's like i don't really generally experience them unless i invite them in um, right because it's so dense as you say yeah it's like we have to choose almost like what channel we're in um and i really appreciate that you said um like for so many of the folks doing this visionary psychics programs that we've been doing their focus is mediumship and um then also this other option well there's lots of other options but the option that you tend to work in quite a bit is with the guide realm and tell mm. me how that i guess do you remember your first experience or um how has that changed for you over the years like who you're working with and how you work great question thank you um i do I, the first thing i remember were, were were kind of my angels the the guardian angels and you know my understanding of it i mean we have many but my understanding is uh, having two you know we all have two guardian angels a uh, sort of a physical one so for me that's cassandra uh and she is like this big kind of seven foot tall kind of amazon kind of with a scythe and she's like proper warrior. and then i have um evelyn who is like this much more elven like but you know kick ass as well and i kind of i remember uh when i was everything seemed to happen when i was 17 actually um <laughs> but the uh the first time i encountered them was when i was about 17 and um i was in this situation where Unfortunately, it led to me basically being beaten up on the street, which wasn't good. But my first experience of them was actually them both coming in about two minutes before it happened, just going, no, don't go that way. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I was like, you know, it's like just this feeling of these two being there. And um, and uh, of course, I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what? Don't be daft. I'm hearing voices or whatever else. And so I carried on walking and like, there it was. And I literally, I mean, it, it was, wasn't pretty. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. but what that did mean was it was like, oh, okay. So once I kind of got past the initial trauma, it was like, oh, okay. So who? Yes. So, yes. You know, so, so that was kind of my, my first encounter with them and kind of gradually um, you, you're right. I do a lot of work more in the, 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 the realm of like, human guide or guides mm -hmm. that have been human or have a soul or 
Mm -hmm. that kind of thing um and so i encountered my prime kind of primary guide probably or my my life guide probably about the age of 21 22 um and then started kind of <laughs> started having visitations from ascended masters yes. um fairly quickly so that's kind of the realm i tend to kind of tune in on it's kind of like because a lot of my work is around people's um life purpose or the reason for being and you know very deep stuff i'm not the 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 psychic who's going to tell you you're going to meet the love of your life at the bakery at three o'clock on a friday right. that's not me it's you know that deeper soul calling um, yeah. and so you know over the course of several months you know merlin showed up and saint germain showed up and um gosh i'm trying to think mary showed up at various times and that kind of thing and i'm there's this like hit parade of not, you know. yeah 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 and um sometimes in this work like when when people will get like such highly elevated guides as say mary or jesus and they're like how could i get that guide it's too big or mm. or maybe they're non-christian and then they get mary or jesus or uh, and and the way i think about it is um those guys are so ascended they have the ability to go to lots of people like they're um they have the ability to work with lots of us and it, like we can Absolutely. like i also share merlin with you so uh yeah. that's another example like a guide that can go to lots of people so you were pretty young like i w i didn't start uh getting guides until i was in my early 40s which mm. please everyone stop doing math and don't try to figure out <laughs> but you were you were really young so you didn't even have like a whole lot of i mean probably you didn't have a whole lot of life experience yet because uh, you were just so young and so um here this team came to sh give you advice and help mentor you and help guide you and do you feel like you listened at that young or was no, it? Don't be daft. <laughs> no, it was like having a bunch more parents telling yeah, me yeah. what to do. And it was like, yeah. you know, and as it was like this kind of hit parade of like them coming along, it's like, you know, part of the reason I think they showed up so early was to kind of almost go, you know, we're, it's a weird thing to say about like ascended masters, but almost say like, we're just normal people. We're just right. like, you know, we're just right. like you. We're just kind of a bit, bit further up the curve Along. kind of thing. Right. Um, so, no, for me, during my 20s, it was just like a cool thing that I was exploring. And yeah, yeah. Um, I wasn't even really doing, you know, readings. I was play. I was kind of exploring shamanism a lot and druidry and a lot of the earth based stuff. Mm -hmm. So Merlin was kind of cool because he played into that, but you yeah. know, um, Mary not so much because you know, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, arrow yeah. dive and all that kind right. of thing. Um, yeah. And then you bring angels into it, and it all goes. I think so. So no, it took me. Uh, so you're right. I was young, but it took me a long time to actually kind of get a sense of respect and perspective, yeah. and because um, I think I was such a conformist teenager in many ways that I sort of like rebelled in my twenties, kind of thing, and you know yeah the, uh, the guides kind of got got the brunt of that as well as it yeah were. yeah it's almost like um this gift was there but like even the 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 deep respect and humility and gratitude i have for the guides now is way different than when i was just starting like oh this is amazing you know so you work with people um in a super like a super hardcore professional level like mm. pro professional style people um have you noticed and you also work with people um who are deeply interested in in this kind of realm mm. have you noticed that things are changing like the more businessy people are becoming more open w what have you noticed like in working mm. with those two groups that seem kind of different but maybe aren't that different at all <laughs> and they're really not that different mm -hmm. in many ways um things are definitely more open in terms of even just using the the, the language uh there's more crossover these days you know so i remember kind of 20 years ago we would never use words like energy in the mm -hmm. uh yeah whereas now it's like no one bats an eyelid you know mm -hmm. so i might not wander into a ceo's office and start talking about you know archangels and that kind of thing but uh, but i'll tell you a story in a second where i did kind of did um but the people I tend to work with are, um, I mean, we would 
in our in our syntax we'd call them light workers or people on a mission earth angels that kind of stuff and um you know that that but that verbiage doesn't work for everyone as it were mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. so the hardcore professionals i work with tend to be change makers or mission driven people but they might not just talk in that language as it were. yes but they're in, but they're very very intuitive Mm -hmm. they just don't necessarily identify individual guides and all that kind of thing but mm -hmm. very often i'll be with them and i can see them you know so i remember um there's a uh like a hardcore um entrepreneurial big name called a guy called gary vaynerchuk mm -hmm. and um his chief heart officer who is uh like his chief hr person is uh, a friend of mine she's very spiritual i remember the moment i met her i, I just like Archangel Azrael was stood behind her mm -hmm. and something and he just said you need to tell her that I'm here I'm like this is but, like but... really high powered <laughs> like ah. yeah, and, I just, yeah. and I just was like yeah I don't yeah. know where this is coming from but Archangel Azrael stood next to you yeah. um and she was like oh my god uh, and it just we were straight yeah. in yeah 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 um and it was amazing so you know that kind of thing of like no matter what your head says, just trust, trust it. Yeah, it's like, yeah. that's, that's been a hard fought lesson. So, um, yeah. So when they show up and like the person looks really hardcore, non-spiritual, they show up and say, you know, you need to kind of mention us or talk about this or talk. I have to listen to it. And, yes. Um, yeah. There's a massive curiosity as well about the, that in the seemingly professional people. As it were. Yeah. Well, um, People that are in uh, higher positions that are doing good, mm -hmm. they they do come in with this sense of mission, like you're saying, or this dropping in as a soul to do this particular piece of contribution, you know, to what we're all here to contribute. Mm. Um, Absolutely. That reminds me, so I don't even know why I'm going to say this, but I just, mm -hmm. I'm going to go for it too. So it's also interesting how guidance can come in events um so my dad's been passed for a long time and the other day i was at my mom's retirement home and the, we were getting onto the elevator and there was this elderly gentleman there and mm. i could it wasn't my dad he's passed for 20 years and it was as if my dad it, it was so similar to my dad and he said this little joke with the same timing as my dad and mm -hmm. the same his hands look like my dad like like and it was just it was a message from my dad um taking the form of this other person yeah. this event this you know being in the elevator just three people together <laughs> um yeah and and so like like it's not only that the guides are coming in but the universe is um creating or finagling all of these particular mm. events to give us understanding and guidance and um and it's really quite remarkable like when you start to look at your life of like all the synchronicities oh god yes absolutely <laughs> yeah yeah and like even during a time that you and i have known each other you uh a little while ago just went through this super accelerated stage of movement where you moved um your house and and gotcha. and i remember i remember thinking like it's like sometimes as as a psychic and you know this too like you'll see something for somebody and it'll be so fast and so unbelievable and then it'll just happen exactly <laughs> like that like how could this be possible and yet there it was and um i think that that's always the the fun of it but also um Sometimes we just have to blurt out what we receive and let it be discovered by the other person as, let, as it's going yeah. to be discovered. Yeah. Let, let, let's share the reality of that story there, Sarah. <laughs> I think I spoke to you on the Tuesday or something like that. You did a reading for me and said about this kind of move that was coming. And I think it, and I was like, no, it'll be in a no! few months. And like literally two and a half weeks later, I signed a lease at a house in the country when I was living in the city. So yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. Uh, you know, you were like, yeah, it's going to happen. And I'm like, mm, a few months. And you're like, no, I think it's really going to happen now. Two and a half weeks. That was yeah. a, that was a roll. That was a, a, a runaway train. That was. 
Well, um, yeah, and but so, and sometimes, like you know, from working with your clients, like mm-hmm. sometimes when we're ready to move, it it just it just happens, and um, like we won't talk about this too much on our recording today because it'll not be uh, relevant later. But like, just like tomorrow is this big lunar eclipse, um, mm. and those are the kinds of events. Sometimes it's astrological. Sometimes it's just all the all the elements are ready, and very fast movement. And so it's so life is surprising that way. It's just interesting oh, that way. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, one of the one of, I'm kind of quite animistic in my beliefs. There's no yeah. doubt everything has a a spirit, and you know. Um, I remember there was this this book I read once by a guy called Parker Palmer. Uh, who's a unitarian universalist called let your life speak Mm -hmm. and uh, it's almost like um if everything has a spirit and what it really is like let not let your life speak but let life speak to you because yes i I think you know we're in constant communication right it's like literally just how much do we listen um and uh and as you say that listening can come in the form of synchronicities of guidance of other people in the elevator you know um but it's always there it's just the degree to which we're open to hearing it i guess i'd love for you to speak a little bit about um the the nature and the nature shamanism and the Mm. druid or whatever aspect of that is coming to mind um um kind of like the location you're in is so unique to that work like it's so associated with that work and what kind of things do you enjoy working with in those those pieces of the puzzle yeah yeah thank you um yeah as you say where i am i was i was really needing to be in nature it was like so part so part of my soul one of the things i think i've really i think we've all noticed during the kind of whole pandemic thing is this call back to uh coming out of our concrete boxes and kind of going into nature you know even whether it's going to parks if you live in the city that kind of thing and and of course now climate change is huge and there's all this kind of thing so i think there's there is this energetic trend towards pulling us back to our core nature um so you know i do a podcast which you've been a guest on called the sacred wild and for me it is about reclaiming that that fundamental sacred wildness that we have because we live Mm -hmm. in in ways in which we're so conformist it's like um i think don miguel ruiz in the the four agreements calls it the domestication of the human spirit ah yeah um so for me that that kind of connection with nature and it might be anything as basic as nature connection of just going into the forest and just sitting there and being with the um you know being with the the plant people or um that kind of thing and just being in you know just being not necessarily even in communication but just being in community yes um it kind of when i go and do that it take it kind of moves me into a different state it moves me into a much more wide open state uh, and I'm aware of the more than human world which yes. um so for me I mean I do get in, you know I do shamanic journeying I do kind of shamanic healing with people um I work with the the eightfold year as we call it in the the Celtic calendar which is basically it's a way of observing the the seasons and all that but marking eight set eight ceremonies that um mm-hmm. um the ancient Celts reputedly kind of followed as it were and that is all about again being more in our natural rhythms our natural state our kind of wildness um because we we are so disconnected from our environment these days and it's not about um sometimes people talk about oh we're humans we're animals that is true but what you're talking about is um nature as a spiritual community the Mm. plant people the weather entities the um the trees as spiritual community and kind Mm. of joining in congregation with spiritual community as yeah which is a different way of looking at things and 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 it's funny because even a person that really rejects all of this that we would be talking about 
if you were to go pop them into nature for even 20 minutes, they would immediately have this sense of relaxation, mm -hmm. opening, maybe emotions would come. It's like our, our true essence comes forward when we're in that vibrational absolutely. level. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it, it, you know, I did some training once with Sonia Choquette and one of the things she mm. said was that nature resonates at the uh, vibration of unconditional love. Uh, I think that's entirely true. And it is yeah. that thing of, as you say, anyone say, and you know, the great thing is much like a lot of spirituality, you know, science is now beginning to catch up and beginning to measure the effects of going into nature and all that kind of thing. And, and, um, you know, we even, I remember during kind of beginning of the year, the BBC, in, in a primetime Sunday evening slot, they had, there's this program called Country Fire, and it's usually about like farming and the country, and it's all about the healing power of nature, right. like forest bathing, all that kind of ah. stuff. It's like, so it's, you know, this stuff is mainstream now on a, yeah. On a level. Um, yeah. 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 It's funny. Um, I have these, uh, uh, shamrock plants that my grandmother always associated with shamrocks because she was Irish and and I got this here in the U.S. at the St. Patrick's they'll be at the grocery store you can get your little shamrock plant and and um I'm, I was like I don't want to do plants again they're just like it's too much responsibility I can't deal with it <laughs> and I got this little you know shamrock plant and now it's been I don't know uh seven years now it's two gigantic shamrock plants and all i do is uh i'm just continually like ah i love my grandmother and i say that to the plant you know it's just this, it's the vibe of of uh the love uh which we can choose to be in yeah. when we're when we want to absolutely how do you think, and this is a little, um, so you, I'm sure you deal with people that have had, you know, really rough trauma. Maybe that's mm -hmm. not who you think you're going to deal with because you're dealing more with professionals or something, but everybody seems to have had that. Is there a particular way you're thinking about how to get, or, or even just the, the, the sadness of the pandemic and some of the things we've had to face? Is there any way that you're thinking about that now as here's how I approach that? Mm, it's, a, it's a really great question. It's, it, it's funny actually, because a lot of those people that I work with, even the hardcore professionals, they experience very deep trauma. And actually a lot of the, you know, I do shamanic and karmic healing work and, you know, I've gone in very deep with people, including around kind of, you know, even, you know, early childhood sexual abuse yes. trauma that kind of thing um you know what what it occurs what occurs to me is you know as human beings we we can either break down or break through yeah. and mo most of the time we because we don't like change we tend to have to break down first and go <laughs> oh crap and then we break through right mm -hmm. um and so so for me you know there is this kind of collective trauma and this you know, the pandemic's part of it, but actually it's only part of it. It's like this polarization that's happening in society. Yeah. Um, which for me is actually the, the you know, the, the symptom of the trauma, if you yeah. like. Um, oh, yeah, very good. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Um, so, you know, for us to do what we're going to do around the climate or, you know, really just to evolve as a, uh, a species in relation to our global more than human community you know so mm -hmm. the flora mm -hmm. the fauna that kind of thing and not to not just destroy this planet we're going to need to evolve we're going to need to shift consciousness yeah and generally dividing lines get even more divided before a shift for me yeah, so that, yeah. that's what i'd say so um so there's going to be conflicts there's going to be stuff coming up you know the next few years i don't think are going to be you know, happy go lucky as mm, it were. Right, right. Um, They're gonna be bumpy, yeah. Yeah, because we are as human beings, you know, even when we've got, you know, people at the uh, climate summit last week saying, Come on, please change and mm -hmm. as human beings we don't because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. too uncomfortable. It's like you know, we're gonna be gently or well, not so gently pushed down this path of right, come on, gotta change now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, but at least the miracle of the conversation is happening, whereas oh God, you know 
20 years ago even there no i mean some people were but in the general mainstream there wasn't even the conversation so no, and this is true of lots of things actually you know the expansion um and you're right it's like fight 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 expand fight 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 <laughs> expand right. so we're on the way it's just not simple you're not simple yeah, yeah, yet yeah. absolutely yeah. you know there, there has to be that kind of you know it's, a, it's an old cliche but you know when there's that fighting and that kind of thing there is that sparky energy that tends to be creative energy and that yeah. really is what what creates express and you know one of the things that did that has come out of the pandemic is so many people because their regular lives have been disrupted you know there are so many people kind of going well hold on it is a right. breakup you know right is this what i want you know is this what i want to do with my life and you know we're hearing about the i don't i think it's a phenomenon in the us the great resignation yes, uh, yes. where so many people are just resigning from their day jobs because like well, i don't want to do this yeah yeah i don't want to i don't want to be in this reality when there are all these other yeah. reality possibilities available yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely so yeah. it's a fascinating time in, in our evolution i think absolutely um is there anything else you'd like to say to anybody listening or i think it's funny that you said about meeting their partner at the bakery at three because probably for somebody listening that's gonna that is acting <laughs> is gonna happen we don't know who it is but <laughs> it'll probably so. be true won't it absolutely <laughs> so please absolutely. if it's if it's if it's anybody listening please email and and let us know it was you but uh yeah because th these things they're not random you know like that is going to no. be the case for somebody so oh undoubtedly and yeah i think the, the thing i would say is like you know look this re referencing the time in time in history and it's one thing i'm seeing with you know people that i am kind of seeing both as reading clients or healing clients and coaching clients is um it is a time of waking up and that mission driven thing i was talking about it's like um we're gonna we're going to go through some just you know some uh, tumultuous times is what the way of it and so you know for those those out there that are feeling mission driven or feeling like oh, i think there's some something bigger i'm here for it's like it is the time to grab hold of that it is yeah the, you know there are so many people so many great people acting as guides out there and all that kind of we have to discern who they are because not all of them are great um mm -hmm. but there's so many good people doing this kind of work the, yes. it, it is the time now is the time it's like everyone is needed yes you know um and so can, yeah. yeah i absolutely agree everyone is needed to contribute whatever their best way of contributing is and yeah yes. absolutely absolutely and you know everyone has greatness in them they just mm -hmm. need to know that and once they can get that they can start to own it and that god what what, what a world it would be if we all brought our greatness together right and yeah. this interdependent web of life we would live in would be know, yeah absolutely well we're getting there slowly slowly yeah, but surely absolutely yeah. absolutely absolutely well chris i want to thank you so much for your time and i will put your contact information below so folks can find it but anyway it's a great honor to speak with you and uh thank you for your time today oh thank you so much as well it's been an honor thank you so much thank you let's see